Hi, my name is Karen Lewis and I'm with WJ Technologies. And I'm going to show you how to reconcile your statement of indirect expenses out of cost point to your income statement. So today we're going to talk about what a statement of indirect expenses is, why it's important to reconcile this every month, when you should perform this reconciliation, how you're going to use cost point to help with it, and then a tip on how you can quickly reconcile the two reports, your statement of indirects and your income statement. So what is the statement of indirects, otherwise known as the SIE for short? It's a report in cost point that calculates your actual indirect rates on a current period and year-to-date basis. Please remember when we're talking about rates, we speak about them on a year-to-date basis, and we also monitor them on a year-to-date basis. The SIE is based on the number of indirect rates that were configured in your cost point database and what accounts were added to your pools and your bases. In cost point, the best practice is used to use wild carding when you set up your pools and bases so that when a new GL account is added, the system will automatically include that new account in your indirect rate calculation. The statement of indirects is going to show you, I'll show you in a moment, the composition of each pool and each base, and then it calculates a percentage for that indirect rate. Those percentages, or what we call actual rates, are then used on your uh, project status report to burden your direct costs and determine the profitability of your contract. So right now we're going to tell you how do you prepare the statement of indirect expenses and cost point. So you're, you should prepare this after all transactions have been entered for the month and you have reconciled your balance sheet accounts. You'll want to prepare the statement of indirects before computing revenue, compare and calculate, prepare and calculate. So on the left-hand side, there's three steps that you perform in cost point to calculate the statement of indirects. And you can see in the screenshot here, you're going to go to projects, cost and revenue processing, cost pool processing, and then you will do three steps. Two of them are here, the build rate application table and the compute and print pool rates. And the first one over here, create pool links, is in another screen. But the first thing you want to do is you want to create pool links. And what this does is if you've added any accounts to the GL, this is the, we just talked about wild carding and how if you use wild carding in cost point in your indirect rate setup, when you run this create pool links, the system will automatically pull those new accounts into your indirect rate calculation. After you create pool links, then you're going to build the rate application table. And that is this screen right here. And what this does is it creates a table to allocate your indirect costs to your projects or to your PSRs. The third step is to comp compute slash print your pool rates. And that's this screen right here. And what that does is it calculates your indirect rates and then allocates those amounts to each pool. Now, that's just the calculation of them. You will, you will need to post your pool journals down here post pool journals, and that will post the allocations to your GL. Cost point does have something that's somewhat new. Um, this cost pool process screen here, this will run all three of those processes at once. So you don't have to do each step on the left-hand side. You can just do run cost pool processes and we'll run it at once. But it's good to understand what the system is doing. So here's a sample of a statement of indirects. And this is the statement of indirects for fringe for fringe. So you see fringe benefits here. The top of the this is a typical um, 
typically what the statement of indirects looks like. So this is this is just the fringe pool. So on the top it has these are the pool costs. You can see total pool costs for the current period and then year to date. We talked about using uh, um, monitoring and looking at your rates on a year to date basis. So that's why I have the year to date amount of a million one oh one nine one four highlighted because this is what we're we're really interested in. So your pool is going to be made up of all your accounts and the amounts for the year. So my total pool cost is 1,101,914. My base, you can see total base over here. Once again, we're looking at year to date amounts. My base amount is 4,022,451. And that is made up of all my base accounts here. And then the total of the uh, base amount, the total costs in those accounts. And what the system does is it divides this 101.1101914 by 4022451, and it comes up with this rate, 27.39%. You know that all costs have been allocated out because this column here, allocation amount, equals 1109914, which is the amount of our pool. So that means the system has calculated and allocated out all of these costs. And here's the allocation amounts. For direct labor, it allocated 967,263. And the way the system came up with it is it took the direct labor amount of 3,530,921 it multiplied it by this 27.39%, and that's how it got the 967263. Now here's a sample project status report. If you'll recall, I said that you, the statement of indirects calculates your actual rates, and then it takes that actual rate and it applies it to your direct costs on your project status report. So we just talked about fringe benefits, and we saw that fringe calculated out at 27.394%. So what this, the PSR is doing, once again, we're looking at year to date. That's what we're interested in. It's taking our direct labor of 22,072, it's multiplying it by the 27.394%, and it's giving you a fringe burden on the $22,000 worth of labor of $3,077.66. So um, there's also, we have an overhead and a GNA a, uh, indirect rate too, and I've highlighted those here on your PSR. So if you were to go back to your statement of indirects, these should be your actual indirect rates for your overhead and um, GNA. So why is the reconciliation between the statement of indirects and your income statement important? It's important because you want to make sure that all your direct and indirect expenses are included on your statement of indirects so you don't underbill or overbill the government. Reconciling your statement of indirects to your income state, is, statement is a way to ensure that you've included all costs in your indirect rates. So, once again, if you added new accounts, were they included in your indirect rates? Some clients do not use wildcarding in their setup of cost point, and so they have to hard code in the any new accounts they set up. So this is a reason that you'd want to reconcile um, your statement of indirects because you want to make sure that all those accounts are included. Or if you added a new org and you linked accounts to a new org, you'd want to make sure that all those costs were included in your statement of indirects. You also want to make sure that you handle your unallowable costs correctly. because they have to be excluded from your claimed rates. Um, 
and they can be tricky because sometimes unallowables need to be in the base of your rates. The rules about unallowable costs are that if they are normally part of your indirect allocation base, then they should remain in that base, whether they're, they're allowable or not. An example of this is if you have unallowable direct labor, that would still be in the base of your fringe because the fringe base is all labor. So that whether it's allowable or unallowable. Another example would be an unallowable ODC. That would remain in the base of your GNA along with unallowable fringe and overhead. That would also remain in your base of the base of your GNA because allowable ODCs are going to be in your base of GNA and allowable fringe and overhead are going to be in your base of GNA. And I said that the rule is if it's normally a part of your indirect allocation base, then you need to include it in your base, whether it's allowable or unallowable. So when do you perform the reconciliation? It should be part of your month and closing process. The screenshot here of these steps, steps 10 through step 24, is just a snippet of the 45 month and close process steps. And I wanted to show you that see it's step 23, reconcile the statement of indirect expenses to the income statement. So it's even in the closing process. Once again, you want to uh, do this step after all transactions have been recorded and posted in cost point and before computing revenue. So how do you perform the reconciliation? There's two ways. The first one is to create a secondary financial report in cost point, And the other is a way to quickly reconcile the reports. So I've outlined uh, the steps for creating a secondary financial statement to compare the statement of indirect rates. So let's just walk through them. Our next slide um, is gonna show a screenshot of how to create these reports. So I'm gonna kinda go back and forth. So to create a secondary financial statement, you're gonna create a financial statement line for each pool, both your base and your cost. And then you're gonna add the accounts, which should be in the base and cost for each pool to the correct financial statement line. So let's look at the next page. So here you go. Here we've created an income statement type financial statement. We've created our lines for fringe for each, um, each indirect rate. In this case, we have um, an indirect rate structure of a fringe, an overhead, and a GNA um, of GNA indirect rates. So here's, uh, like I, I stated, we need to add a, a line for each pool. I have my fringe pool, my overhead pool, my GNA pool, and then we're going to add a line for each base, my fringe base, my overhead base, and my GNA base. And then your allocation accounts, because you want to add your allocation accounts to make sure that you have uh, you've zeroed out all of your costs. So you can see here, I on the title of the lines, I kind of, um, uh, I'm explaining what is going to be in this fringe pool. So this percentage sign, this is what's considered wild carding. A typical government contracting chart of accounts um, has assets as, you know, 1,000s. I don't know how many characters you have in your chart of accounts, but let's say it's a, um, a four character uh, account number structure. So assets are 1,000. Liabilities are 2,000. Equity is normally 3,000. Revenue is normally 4,000. Direct costs are normally 5,000. Fringe costs, 6,000. Overhead, 7,000. GNA, 8,000. And unallowable, 9,000. So you can see right here in my fringe pool, I'm saying 6% is what goes in my fringe pool. Well, normally 6,000 accounts are fringe accounts. So I'm just saying that anything starting with a six is going to be in my fringe pool. My base is going to be total labor for my fringe base. Then my overhead pool, I'm saying any account that starts with a seven 
will be my overhead pool. And my overhead pool in this instance, uh, our, I'm sorry, our overhead base in this instance is direct labor plus bid and proposal labor plus fringe on that labor. My GNA pool, anything that starts with an eight, um, a, a number, an account with, that starts with an eight. And in this case, my GNA base is a total cost input base, which means all costs except your GNA pool costs. And then I have two types of allocation accounts, your debit allocation account and your credit allocation account. And if you were to add these accounts up, all of them, they were zero out because these accounts just move costs um, in, in your GL. So after you create a line for all um, the not, the, um, I'm sorry, after you've created uh, the lines for the pool and the base and the allocation, you're going to create another line for all other non-pool accounts, just to make sure that you've mapped all the accounts. The revenue and unallowables and other accounts have nothing to do with your indirect rate costs, so you can just group them together. You'll map those accounts to the appropriate line on your, um, your financial statement that you're creating. And then you wanna run this print unassigned duplicate accounts to confirm that all accounts have been mapped. So cost point has a utility that you can run and it will let you know if you've uh, duplicated counts between pools or there's some accounts that you haven't assigned. You're gonna compare the secondary final financial statement to each pool on your statement of indirect expenses to confirm there's no variances. On a monthly basis, you do want to reprint this unassigned duplicate accounts report to confirm that you haven't added any new accounts um, which, weren't which weren't assigned. So once again, here's our fringe pool with the 6,000 accounts. So you can see here, um, well, actually our account structure here is a three level, but all my fringe accounts I've, I've selected from these accounts and, and um, these are in my pool here on this right hand side. So to create this financial statement configuration, you're gonna to navigate to accounting, general ledger, financial statement configuration and manage financial statements. You're gonna select an income statement as the type. It's not gonna be your primary statement. Your primary statement is gonna be your regular income statement. So you do not check this box. The first line you're going to add is, is called your fringe pool, in our case. You'll add all the fringe accounts to, to be mapped to the fringe pool to this line. And you'll continue doing that until you've um, assigned all the accounts. Now, number six, remember to include the allocation accounts in each pool and base as needed. Indirect rates are like a waterfall. You start with fringe, that's the first rate you're gonna calculate, and then you go down to the next rate is gonna be overhead, and the next rate is GNA, in our, in our simplistic example. If you have overhead labor in your overhead pool, fringe is gonna be applied to it. So when I say remember to include the allocation accounts in each pool and base, you're gonna to want to include the fringe allocation on your overhead labor in your overhead pool to make sure that you have all costs accounted for in your overhead pool. So here's what the, um, the secondary statement is going to actually look like when you finish. So you can see our fringe pool is made up of a million ninety-eight six eighty-five in costs and our fringe base is made up of 4,196,990. So when we compare this to our statement of indirects, this should, this 1098,685 should be the total for our fringe pool, and this 4196,990 should be the total for our base. So you can see as we go down, here's the overhead pool, 646,856. Our overhead base, 4,029,564. Once again, when we compare to our statement of indirects, these should agree. If they don't agree, then something's wrong. 
So continuing down, here's our GNA pool, our GNA base, and then our allocation accounts. So remember I said if you added your debit and credit allocation accounts, they'd zero out. This is proving that. And then here's our unmapped accounts. These would be all the other accounts um, on the income statement, revenue and unallowables. So how do you perform the reconciliation? So besides, um, well, I'm, I'm sorry, this is, this is the, the tip, the quick way to reconcile it. We just showed you how to use a secondary financial statement to reconcile it, but this would be a quick way. If you have a total cost input base, if you add the GNA pool plus the GNA base from your statement of indirects and you compare this total to the total direct expenses plus your indirect expenses from your trial balance or your income statement, they should tie. It, if they tie, that means that your rate calculation is correct and you have all the, um, you've, you've captured all of your costs in your indirect rates. If they don't tie, something's wrong and you're going to have to reconcile why and figure it out. If you have a value added GNA base, a quick reconciliation is to take your GNA pool, your GNA base, and your subcontract handling and and or material handling base from your statement of indirects and add all those together. You're then going to compare that number to your total direct expenses and indirect expenses from your trial balance, excuse me, or income statement. Now I do this all the time. I go into clients and do it all the time and and you think that I wouldn't, you think that the, um, the two um, amounts would tie, but they don't. There's always not always, but a lot of times there's a variance. And so clients are usually leaving money on the table. So here's an example of my quick reconciliation for a total cost put input base. I have my income statement over here. This is my primary income statement. So you can see we have sales, cost of goods sold, which is all, all our direct costs, our indirect expenses, which include fringe and overhead, we, we show here a gross margin before our indirect expenses, um, the, the remainder of our indirect expenses. This is just a presentation that um, some clients like. Other clients bring their fringe and overhead down below the gross margin line, but in this case, this is just the example that we're using. Anyway, the, re the rest of the indirect expenses, you have your general and administrative, your bid and proposal, your research and development, and then your unallowable admin expenses. Um, and then below the line, you have interest expense for a net income of 2913293 So here's my quick reconciliation. From my statement of indirects, I'm taking my GNA pool, which is 2061000 and that's from the next slide. I'm going to take my GNA base, which is the 23,331,583, which you'll see on the next slide. And I add those together and I get 25,392,817. Well, if I take my direct and indirect costs from my income statement and I add them up, I should come, I should be able to get back to this $25 million cost, which I do. I have a variance of 10 cents. And you can see I'm pulling the 20,109,000 from my total direct expenses, I'm pulling that, I'm adding it. I'm taking my fringe costs of 2068049 I'm adding that in. I'm taking my overhead costs of 1307700 my GNA, 1307454 my bid and proposal, 569916 my research and development, 30177 I'm not taking my unallowable and I'm not taking my interest. And I'm adding that and comparing it to the GNA pool and GNA base from my statement of indirects. And I know that everything ties and I've, I'm recouping all my costs through my indirect rates. Let's look at slide 14. Here's your statement of indirect expenses. Here's our base, 23331583. Let's go back. 23331583 and then our pool 
2061234. So that's it in a nutshell. It's very important you do this every month. I told you as a consultant, we work with several government, or that's all we work with are government contractors. And this is something I find that people are not doing on a monthly basis, and it's extremely important you do. If you'd like to, if you have any questions about what I went over or have any other questions about how we could help you, you can contact me. My email's below here, or you can give me a call. And thank you very much for attending.